Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch. And this time on Gravity Sketch, we're actually going to be looking at... This one is called... The Revolve Tool. The Revolve Tool has a couple of different settings. And it's useful for making long cylinders like candlesticks and things like that. So here's how it's going to work. It, it does use the axis. So I'm going to move my environment up so you can see that white line that is the axis. There we go. So you can see once I've got a revolve tool, it makes this circle around the axis. Now, when you first activate the tool, there are two main ways to make it. One way is your freehand. The other way to use this tool is point to point, point to point. Now you click and it holds there, click and it holds there, click, click. If you look closely, you can see the blue dots. And as I move my controller, it's controlling those blue dots. The other trigger, ends your shape. The line tool works the same way. It's got that point to point, and then the other trigger ends it. But in this case, we're using it for our candlesticks, for a vase, for a pipes on a vehicle, that type of thing. They are going to be fully cylindrical. And when you edit them, it does have a host of custom items. When you edit, you'll notice it only gives you one set of circles. This is not a subdivided object in that you can, multi you can manipulate all the different facets. A revolve is always going to be that perfect cylinder. So as I move these control points, you can see how it keeps the cylindrical shape all the way around. It is a perfect mimic of our shape. And then the blue trigger holds it in place. Now it responds to all of our normal manipulation and moving tools. It responds to our normal duplicating by pulling a trigger, that type of thing. Undo, 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 undo. Now one thing about these cylinders, when we go into our edit mode, the big circle, you'll notice I made my cylinder fairly thin. It's a shell. With these circles, the inner circle is the thickness of that shell. So you can see how the thicker, the larger I pull that down, the thicker it makes my tube. The center stays the same size, and the outer shell gets thicker and skinnier. Not only can we do it as a shell, but we can do a cutaway actually open up this thing so I can see inside. The second circle, as you move it around, you can see how it opens up my shape, depending on how far I bring it around. So if I wanted to do a cutaway to see the inside of an engine type of thing, the outer circle, it even gives you a degrees, a number of degrees on how much you are filling in all the way around, keeps it back to a full circle. The dots, the circles, the control points, control how complex, how detailed your item is. We can simplify, especially on lower end systems. The fewer control points, the less processing. You can see how the shape is still very similar, but we have reduced the number of control points. Now there are very few, so we've lost most of the curve. Undo, undo, give me my control points back. Simplify control points. Now this does respond to weight, very similar to the way lines respond to weight. So you can see as I pull these out, let's make it a little bigger, as I pull these out in a curve, if I grab one and add more weight, you can see how its curve gets more pointy. I'm going to grab this one and add more weight. 
gets more pointy. If you grab a curve, but then reduce the weight, it still affects the roundness, but not as much. Weight, just like the weight in lines. So we have a button to reset the weight back to all circles. So if you've been messing the weight and you don't like it and you want to go back, we do have a way to reset that weight. Visually, the sharper ones become more square. You can see the control point. And the softer ones become more cloverleaf. Just so you can sort of see those guys. Square and cloverleaf. Now we reset weight and they go back to all round circles. Just very far. There we go. Okay, lovely vase. Vase or candlestick or two faces, never mind. So we've got those as controls and the round as controls. These buttons across the bottom. By default, this guy you can see is a round vase. These just limit your surfaces, your faces. Triangle, only three, or a star giving you this weird pattern. Now, if you're combining things, you'll notice I'm going to go back to hexagon. Six sides. If I start reducing the circle, you'll notice I still have six sides. Even if I'm only halfway, now I've got six sides around. So the number of sides, four sides, will hold true even if you're not going a full circle. Four sides gives you four sides even if you're only going halfway around. Now I've got four sides. So our shape, whoops, a little too far. So our shapes do shape the whole vase, the whole candlestick, but it also will hold true that same number, no matter how small you then make the segments, the slices. I can go back to circle, circle. So these revolve objects get really creative. Low poly, you can see the control points are now solid lines. This is the closest you have to go between subdivide, smooth curves, and the not subdivide, points. Now you still can't grab corners, edges, or faces. It's still a revolve object, so it's still entirely controlled by the control points. But in low poly mode, the weight doesn't have quite as much effect. It has some effect, but not as much as in the regular rounded mode. Then the weight will have a much more obvious effect. So these are all main controls for editing and manipulating your, your vase, your candlestick, your revolve tool. Now, very important, there is a way to recover that axis. Maybe I need to add more. If I want to add more to my revolve tool, whoops, let's get back to my revolve tool here. Revolve tool. You'll notice it doesn't line up with the white line axis. So if I make another one, that's not going to work. No, that's terrible. So I would like to be able to get this, the axis, perfect once again. Ideally, it's not a matter of moving the object to the axis, because if I've got it built into a spaceship, I'd like to find the axis of that object in place. We can do this. So right now, the old axis is over here, and I want to find the new axis of this guy. Here's how we're going to do it. First, I'm going to set my revolve back to the free freeform drawing. Okay. But now, here's how it's going to work. Watch closely as my grabber intersects the vase, it turns red. In your headset, the shape will also get a red outline. That's when you can grab it. But I don't want to grab it right now. Watch this. I'm going to just intersect but keep the hand open. Now with your other hand, trigger. Ah, see the red arrows? Look at look look at the red arrows inside. Touch, trigger. Okay. So the trigger also, you'll notice, moved the axis. So if I want to get the axis back on here, trigger, and I want to get that white line, 
to line up on that axis. Now there is a way for it to snap. Let's see if I can get this so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Highlighted. I'm just gonna pull the trigger part way. Only a half pull on the trigger and you'll notice, see how it's moving around? The axis is moving around but it's snapping a little bit. So while that highlighted half trigger, I want it to snap, it snapped to the red arrow. So now I am fully in sync, the same axis with the original shape. Let's do that again. Intersect, half pull, Overlap, keep it only half pulled. If it doesn't work the first time, try it again until it snaps to that center red arrow. Half pull. See how it snapped and is now neatly along the line. This takes practice. If it gets a little frustrating, keep at it. It's the half pull. Getting it to, there we go. And you can see it sort of snaps in place when it gets in the right place. Ah. In fact, I'll even do it in a different color. Oops. So we're gonna move him here. Half pull trigger. Half pull trigger so that that axis snaps to my red arrow axis I'm trying to align up on. I don't know if you guys can see the red axis when I do it. But now that the axis is lined up, you can see how this fits perfectly inside and out along the blues axis. Whew. So the revolve tool, simple making candlesticks, but once you get into edit mode, there are a few different ways to really customize. Now I'm gonna take this red one and do a cutaway so we can see the blue one inside the red one. There, now that's a good example of seeing that cutaway as the revolve tool. Hopefully this gives you some ideas and inspirations on what to try and how to use these tools. The Revolve tool is just one of many that gives you a lot of precise control to make the model you want. Once you've got it in place, we can then go in and edit that tool to really make it perfect. And then we can get the axis again so we can add more things and make sure everything still lines up perfectly. Thanks for joining us. I hope this gives you some good ideas on what to try on your own. Feel free to give us questions in the, co in the uh, comments below. Put that right about here like a nice little bow tie. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Whoops, we don't want to do it that way. No, that's going to be a pain in the butt doing it that way. Put you back to us. There we go. Subscribe. Thanks for joining us on Gravity Sketch. We do this each week here at youtube.com slash shameless mayhem. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have questions and we'll see you next time. Have fun, everybody.